Hi, Mark Sip at Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss a nice selection of Lanier Metters face jugs that we'll be selling in our March 23rd auction. Lanier Metters was born in 1917 uh, in the Cleveland, Georgia area, and he carried on his father, Cheever Metters, business when he could no longer uh, do it, when he became ill in 1967. He also kind of got his start uh, as a major potter by filling an order for the Festival of American Folk Life at the Smithsonian. Uh, Cheever was supposed to fill an order of face jugs for that uh, exhibit, and um, it, it was, uh, he was ill, and Lanier, around the age of 50, stepped in, and he had already been involved in the pottery, but that was kind of his coming out as a true artist and somebody who was gonna take the reins of the shop. You can see how his craft evolved over the years. So this is the earliest example um, here. And there's even earlier examples that have a, a, a kind of immature, unfinished, uh, matte, almost matte greenish glaze to them and more blob-like facial features. Um, very uh, simplistic. Some of them, I believe, even lack ears. This example has a more typical runny alkaline glaze on it. Um, but you can see it has uh, fairly simplistic facial features. This figure lacks teeth. He kind of has a pouty expression. Um, and you can see how uh, Lanier has manipulated the jug surface, much like the Edgefield South Carolina potters of 100 years earlier. Uh, he, has, he has created the face by depressing the body of the jug and depressing the front of the jug. You can see the large uh, bald clay eyes are decorated with dark pupils. Um, and the face on this is, is it's really great, it's different, it's different. Um, you, you can find Lanier Metters face jugs with depressions on them and things like that. Um, this one is kind of the uh, extreme case of, of using depressed features on the jug. You can see just how concave it is on the sides and how concave it is on the front. It bears his signature on the underside. Lanier Metters. And this piece was made uh, sometime during the late 1960s. Moving along, you can see his faces are becoming more elaborate. So this is an earlier example. Later on, he's adding teeth. And he's actually bold enough to make a piece that has two faces on it. So this piece was probably made during the very early 1970s. These double face jugs are very sought after today, obviously because they have two faces, they took longer to make, there's more craftsmanship involved. They're certainly rarer than the single face jugs. And this again has that dark alkaline glaze, the same type of glaze as his father was using. It sort of um, transfers from a, a glossy dark olive at the top to a kind of matte greenish at the base. Similar to some of his earlier glazes that I was talking about um, a little bit ago. He has unglazed kaolin eyes and uh, rock teeth. His earlier examples actually have pieces of uh, rock for the teeth, which are great. Very desirable feature, and one of the, one of the traits that people use to uh, diagnose an earlier product of his is those rock teeth. You can see like the Edgefield potters these kaolin eyes are completely unglazed, and then he's added black pupils to them. And this example has his signature on the underside. And that was how he signed all his, his face jugs. Um, earlier examples, uh, very, very early examples, I believe, have his initials, but almost all face jugs that you see by Lanier Metters are going to have Lanier Metters hand and sized uh, in script. So we go from something like this, rock teeth, um, a little bit cruder face, 
to something like this. It's becoming even more refined. He's adding details around the eyes. He's adding wrinkles between the eyebrows. The teeth are no longer rocks. They are um, glazed pieces of kaolin. And the faces are also assuming a little more um, expression, whereas we have his earlier works having depressed, crudely depressed features, highly stylized. And then we move on to more depressions and a protruding chin and things like that. And then we start to get a uh, very much more realistic representation of the human face. We have a you know undulating, round modeling of the cheek. We have those creases between uh, or descending below the nose, flanking the mouth, deeply carved nostrils, and we also have funny facial expressions. So this one kind of has a suspicious look. He's kind of looking to the side like. You know, what's going on over there? Again, signature on the bottom, linear manners. This piece was made uh, sometime during the late 1970s, maybe eight, uh, 1975, 1978, somewhere in there. Second half of the 70s. This example, we actually know when it was made because it was purchased new by the consigner, um, I think sometime around 1978 or 79. And you can see it even takes this sculpting a step further. And he's added um, a, a much more well-developed style to his faces. Um, you know, you can see on this example, even the glaze looks a little less flashy. This example has a very high gloss, very refined alkaline glaze. The face is, is very round. He's put a lot of detail into uh, the sculpting aspect, the, the portraiture of the face itself. Uh, the nose is tipped up. Um, and later on in the late 70s and into the 80s, he would get more and more playful with these faces and more and more expressive with the faces. And again, the signature linear matters is on the bottom of this. Um, so these pieces really follow a 10 year span and you can see just how things, how different things get over 10 years and just how skilled he gets. I mean, even the handle on this looks a little, uh, a little round, a little thick. Handle on this, you can see is a little more refined, a little more sure handed. Lanier's work was collectible from the day it was made. I mean, when they were sold at the Smithsonian, uh, they sold for $2.50 each and they sold like hotcakes. And uh, they were uh, sold easily by him, along with another whole gamut of other great pieces like snake vases and, and um, you know, very special uh, other alkaline glaze wares done in the Southern tradition. Um, and to this day, uh, they continue to be collected. They continue to be uh, desired. And his, his earlier pieces, such as this example and this double face example, are considered highly prized examples of Southern folk art. So I hope you learned a little something today. I, th I think it was an interesting thing to show the kind of progression of his work. And we're excited to offer these four jugs on our March 23rd sale. So.